welcome to IndiaInTax.com and Suleka.com presenting you the cookery show. Myself, Levin Johnson, and I've got Arjun Yadav here to assist me, chefs from Five Star Hotels. Today we're going to be doing Pudel Curry Colombo. Pudel means new harvest. Curry means the meat itself, and it could be a lamb or goat. Colombo itself is gravy or a curry, which you're going to be making it. So it is a very popular dish coming very close from Chetinad. So let's just start with the ingredients at the moment. So we're going to be having mutton curry, which is pretty much cut into cubes. Now, next important thing that you definitely want is the onions here, which is again chopped up. So this is pretty much like around 300, 400 grams of onion, chopped onions here for half a kilo of lamb. And tomatoes, of course, we have the tomatoes here. It's all chopped up and kept in here. Then you have star anise, and then you have whole red chilies. Then you have soap, and then we have the ginger garlic paste. So we got turmeric powder, we got chili powder, then we have dhania powder, coriander powder, roasted jeera powder. So we're going to, we got the pot hot now, so it's pretty much ready. So you can see the fumes coming out. And you start off with the oil. Oil heat for in the kadai for a little while. So you have some to start with. You can see the bubbles coming out. Then you have the chilies, star anise, and then the marathi moong. And the last thing to go on this as a whole spice is just a few cloves. Just when this soap starts to get a bit of color on it, you want to add the chopped onions. Uh, just when the onions have started to brown now and it's getting to the point where it's just going to be golden brown right through, you could be adding a little bit of ginger garlic paste. By the recipe, it's around 10 grams, 10 grams to 100 grams of meat. So the mutton curry cut can go in, it's like 100 grams, but right now we are making it for half a kilo. <clears throat> what is very important here to seal the meats so that it's nice and tender when it's finished. So and another important thing is crash the bottom of the pan so the onions and the ginger garlic doesn't stick to it. And once you Seal the meat when you start to see that it's all being sealed, you don't see anything raw edge at any sides. Now we're going to go with, I think it's all pretty much done now, it's all sealed beautifully. Now we are ready for the spices here. So the first one we're going to go for is the turmeric powder. And then the chili powder, coriander powder, that's a cumin powder but it's a roasted cumin powder. And the last one to go is the soft powder. This is when you got to be careful when the spices start to stick at the bottom, then you got to scrape it off. Otherwise, you're going to have a dish which has got a taste of a burnt spice in it. You just broil off the spices, and just when it starts to ooze oil, that's when the spices have taken the heat and it's ready for the next stage. So you could see it near the oil bubbling out and just trying to separate from the spices. Because lamb being a tough meat, um, and we got to steam it a little bit to make it nice and tender, at this point we're going to be putting in some water to give it an extra moisture. We could also be cleaning the sides of the pot at this point to make sure none of the spices are stuck to the sides and it's going to burn the dish. So every 100 grams of mutton curry you'll be doing, 100 ml of water will be just enough just the equal amounts and at this point it could just give it one bubble and then you could put the lid on for the meat to be tender and just keep it simmering put the temperature down you have to put the flames down and just get it at this point you could see that the water is reduced and not to the amount that we actually wanted but what you're trying to do in here is you're trying to tenderize the meat uh, the meat is nice and tender but now we can adjust the consistency of the gravy depending on how long you want to leave the lid on uh, if you're going to leave the lid on it is going to take another 10 minutes before we actually want it dry. Uh, so we're going to leave it open for next 5 minutes and at that, that stage you could be putting in some chopped tomatoes. 
and it's come out really nice and beautiful here. The consistency of the gravy is just perfect. You can see that the spices are blended beautifully and the consistency has just come to the stage where you could just add into tomatoes now. See 200 grams of tomatoes. It's a colombo, so it has to be a curry or gravy consistency. So if you want to be making it a bit dry, then you have to go down or lessen down the amount of water and the tomatoes that you put in so that it's nice and dry. But we're going to be making a colombo now, so it's 200 grams of tomatoes for 100 grams of meat. We'll be waiting for the tomatoes to cook. Tomatoes have to sweat off and we're going to be putting the lid back on again and then simmer it for next three to five minutes. In all this dish is going to take up to half an hour. It's almost half an hour now and the tomatoes are beautifully sweated off. And the last thing you definitely want to put in here is the salt. If you are going to be having it with a dry bread, I would suggest this is just perfect. But if you want to have it with rice, you could have it a bit more liquidy. Now the dish is ready, the Pudavel Curry Colombo. And that's a bit of garnish to go on. Okay, there could be another trick that you could add on to it, is a bit of garam masala powder. And when the steam is still on, this just finishes and blends the spices beautifully together. So and put the lid on for say a fraction of like 30 seconds or probably a minute. And then get a pot ready in which you want to serve it. And just before you're ready to serve, you could just give one boil and it can go straight onto the pot. Dish is ready to be poured into the dish. Give it a good mix so that the garam masala powder is nicely mixed up and a bit of chopped coriander to go on top and the dish is ready for you.